Paulette, the mother half of the mother-daughter duo of Paulette and Tess from Tulip Square. Today I'm going to be taking one of our older patterns, the wallet clutch, and I'm going to remake it in some less confusing fabric than it is currently made in. Um, the pictures in the original pattern are a little, let's just say the choice of fabric was not the best decision I've ever made. So I'm going to make it with some slightly toned down fabrics and we're going to do it step by step. So if you want to follow along and make it yourself, you can. If you need the pattern, it's number 562 wallet style clutch. And so I'm going to go pick out some fabrics and we're going to get started and we'll see you over at the sewing machine. Okay, this is the pattern we're going to be working on today. It's the quilted clutch style wallet. It's number pattern number 562 if you need to buy the pattern and sew along with me, that's fine. Um, when I made the pattern the original time, I used the fabrics in this collection and it's a little busy for pattern photos. It's a little hard to follow along. So this time I'm going to pick a nicer subdued set of fabrics and we're gonna make it with a whole new set. And what I'm going to use is this beautiful set from Connecting Threads. It's called Moonlit Promenade. And there's a lot of other colors in the fat quarter bundle, obviously, but I picked these four that I'm going to use and it's going to make a gorgeous wallet that I think I'm keeping for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all the pieces I need and then we're going to get back and we're going to start putting it together. So if you want to sew along with me, go ahead and cut your pieces and come on back. All right, I've got my fabric pieces all cut. These two are basically almost the full fat quarters and these are going to be the outsides of the clutch and the inside. And these have to be, have batting put between them and they have to be quilted before I cut them into the pieces. So we're going to set those aside for a few minutes. And then these other two pieces, because I want to use the fat quarters, I'm going to have to piece both of them. So I'm going to piece, these two are going to be pieced so that this will be longer like that. Um, and then this will be for the binding. Now, when you piece two pieces, you're gonna need a longer section than what you would originally have what it calls for on the pattern. And because I'm losing this much of each one, I'm going to lose the width of the binding, which is two and a quarter plus a little bit of a seam. So you're gonna to have to cut these two to equal what the pattern requires, plus about two and a half inches to be on the safe side. So those... Now the credit card pockets, I'm not going to sew them on an angle because it would take too much of the fabric and I wouldn't have enough. So these I'm going to just sew this way and we're just going to hide it on the inside of the pockets. That's... Okay, I've got all the fabric cut out. I've got the quilted parts are quilted and trimmed out and cut and ready to go. I've got my binding all set. I did have to. Uh, sew a seam in the one because I did want to use the fat quarter instead of longer fabric. So I've got that binding. I've got the narrower bindings all cut and ironed and ready to go. Now the first thing we have to do on the credit card strip is you have you have to put your lines on with measure them out and, and draw your lines on carefully like it shows you in the in the pattern. Use the right dimensions and everything. And then I found that if I go like this on the first stripe, because the first strip you have to fold forward and you wanna make sure you get it exact so these all line up nicely. I put pins on each end and then I take this one and I fold it up and just tug on both of those pins so it's nice and lined up. Then I can take the pins out and I can press this right here. And then the next, the next fold goes up. So you can see that one. You don't need the pins on that one. You can just go like this, line it up with the lines. Get it nice and even. Back this up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to iron that one. Now if I flip it over, the next one's going to have to go up like this again, so I'm going to put the two pins just right at the top and bottom of each of those two lines. Try to get them as exact and accurate as you can, right on the lines like this. Oops, and that one's not accurate at all. Let's straighten it out. There we go. Just like that. And keep this other part even. If you have to pin it to keep the other ones from moving around a lot, go ahead and do that. We're going to do that because we're going to be flipping it back and forth a lot. All right, so now I'm going to 
fold it right on this line between those two pins. Get the pins a little tug. And remove the pins. Do that whole thing a little iron. And when you press this, you're pressing both of the layers you just did. Like so. And the next one is going to get folded opposite, kind of like an accordion. So that one I can flip the whole thing over. Find that next line. Hold down along the line. Give it a press. Just like so. Now we've got three. I'm going to take these out. They're actually kind of in the way, so we're not going to use those. And then just keep, I'm just going to keep pressing this to make sure that the sides are lining up nicely and they're not going kind of wonky at me at all. Next one is this one. I'll do one more, show you. Pin there. Pin on this end, nice and even with your lines. Fold it over. Hold it to those two pin lines. Pull out the pins and press it. The more even you get this, the nicer your, your credit card pockets will be. Now you just keep going across the whole length of this until you've used up all the lines you drew on and you're down at the end of your piece. And okay, after you've got all four of your pockets, you've got this one, this one, this one, and this one got the four pockets and now we're going to take this other end and bring it around to the back lay it down even up these two bottom edges and press this top fold I've got the sides all clipped together just so the thing isn't falling apart as I'm working on it now this should be hopefully about seven and a half inches long and it is so that's perfect so now this gets sliced in half this way to be our two sets of pockets and we'll go do that and we'll move on to the next step okay i've got the credit card pockets all done they're trimmed to size and i've got the sides just clipped so that they won't fall apart while they're sitting here and i've got these are all the pockets for them and those are both ready and we'll set those aside for now and then we've got the pieces that i've already quilted we're going to work on these next and these are i quilted I just used a walking foot and made some diagonal lines. And I used a white thread on one side and a black thread on the other, so they both show up. Now you can pick whichever side you want to be the right side or the wrong side. So whatever side you want to be the right and the outside of your pocket, you put that side up and we're gonna sew a zipper right to one end, just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that zipper. All right, I've got the zipper sewn to, I sewed it to, to, I sewed it to this side so that this will be the outside and then I also did a little row of top stitching along the edge just to keep the, the zipper nice and flat. So this is like this and that's ready to go. Now this is going to be the outside of the pocket. So now I'm going to flip this piece over and I'm going to sew one of these shorter strips of binding to the other side and this will be the inside of the pocket. So I'm going to sew this to this side and then I'm going to flip it over and sew it down to the other side. So we'll do that right now. Do this nice and quick right here. And I'm just going to fold this over, tuck it down nice and even, and I'm going to stitch along the edge. that edge of that pocket is all done. That's the inside, that's the outside. Now I'm going to take these two smaller quilted pieces and I'm going to do the same thing with a piece of binding on one end of each of these. And first I have to decide which is going to be the right side of the pockets and which is going to be the wrong sides. And I think on these pockets I'm going to use these for the right sides. So I'm going to sew to the opposite side of these so they get folded to the right side when I'm done. So I'm going to sew this here and this here. 
And then those will get folded over to the other side. We'll go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Now we're working on the credit card pockets. Um, first, you need to either sew a little stitch along each edge just to keep the pockets all in line while you work on the binding. And if you don't want to stitch it, you can pin them in place, but just make sure that they can't move when we start to sew the binding on. Now you have to decide if you want your cards to slide in and out from the left side or from the right side once the wallet is assembled. Most people like them to slide in from the right side. I'm left-handed and I would prefer them to slide in this way. You're gonna sew on this side. You're gonna put the binding on this side. And then once it's sewn down and it gets folded over, it's going to go to this side, like so. So that's how you would do it. I'm going to put mine the other way because I'm going to keep this wallet when it's done and I would like them facing this way. So I'm going to sew them this way, flip it over and they will end up this way. I'll show you how that works. We'll do one right now. sure you're using nice consistent quarter inch seams so everything matches up nicely. I'm going to trim that off and trim that off and then I'm going to flip it over to the front side. Like so. Flip it over and stitch it down and this time you're stitching close to that inside folded edge. Now this is what you've got. This side is still just stitched down and this side is all finished off with the binding. Now I'm going to do the other pocket and then we'll continue. Okay now so far just to keep things straight you've got this almost square piece that's got the zipper on it. You've got two of these and you've got two of these. So you're going to take one of these short pocket pieces and one of these credit card pieces and you're going to line them up so the edges are even and the bottoms are even like so. And you're going to flip it over and you're going to sew binding to this edge here along this edge and then you're going to fold the binding over and sew it to that edge. So we're going to do that next. Now I'm going to fold this to this side and sew the binding down right along this inner folded edge. Now you've got this pocket piece and it's got that and it's got your credit cards. You don't do that with the second set right now. We're not doing that yet. Now, if you've got your big piece, if you haven't done this yet, cut the curves at the one end according to the template that's in the pattern. Once you've got that done, we're going to take one of these pieces that has the, all the credit cards in the pocket on it and you're going to put this bottom edge five inches from this end of the wallet piece, not the end you just cut the curved edges out of, on the other end. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, right there. Make sure it's nice and even and straight across, which it really isn't just yet, is it? <laughs> right about there. And then I'm gonna stitch this in place along the bottom edge of this binding, right right along here and right through all the layers. I'll do that right now. Okay, now this next step is gonna look wrong, but it's not wrong. You're going to take the piece with the zipper, you're gonna flip this piece over, and you're gonna put this piece on top of it with the zipper right side up. I've got the zipper with the side with the zipper pull on it, right side up. And I'm going to line up the, the edges here and the bottom. 
and I'm going to sew the zipper. Now I know this looks wrong because it looks like you're sewing one side to the right side and one side to the wrong side. I'm going to flip the whole thing over and you're going to take your last piece of pocket and put it here either way whichever way you wanted it and line it up with the bottom right above that zipper right over the zipper and the last credit card pocket like so and then you need to keep these pieces all connected together nicely you can pin them or you can clip them but you need to do something so they don't shift and I'm going to just put some clips on here like so couple up down here like so so it's all clipped together ready and ready to go okay my camera seems to have eaten my whole section on sewing the binding to your wallet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to refilm that um, using just a scrap of some quilted fabric i've got and i'm going to use this for the right side and this for the the lining side and the process is the same whether you're making a wallet or a placemat or a table runner or a quilt or whatever. It's just sewing the binding to the wrong side and, and finishing it off on the right side. So I'm just going to show you that process here. So when you start, you will start on the back side of your item. And you start sewing it about a third of the way from the corner you're heading towards. You don't want to start it way up here or you won't have enough room to do your final connection of the two ends. And right in the middle is just, you'll kind of end up there anyway, so you don't want to start there. You want to start down here, leaving a good, like a, at least a six inch tail of your binding. And then you're going to sew this bottom third, you're going to go from right about here down to a, within a quarter of an inch of the next edge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sew that. And when you sew that, um, make sure you're doing a nice quarter inch seam so you've got it nice and even for when you're actually turning it over and putting it where it goes. So I'm just going to start right about here and I'm just going to sew to the corner. And then you take it out from under your sewing machine, cut that end off, and then here's a little trick that I like to do. What you're going to do is you're going to turn it this way so that your next line of binding is going to even up with this next edge okay so you're going to fold this corner so this is a nice 45 degree angle and this comes down to meet that now i found a good way to do that is once you've made your 45 degree corner if you just take a ruler or something nice and straight lay it across this previous line and bring this down as long as you've made your got your corner right bring this down it'll go straight along the next edge so then what you do is you sew this whole seam all the way down until you get to a quarter of an inch from this next corner so i'm going to do that so i've gotten down to the next corner i'm going to do the same thing i showed you before fold a 45 degree angle i like to take the ruler Lay it like so, and bring this down parallel nicely to the next edge. And then we're gonna sew that whole section of the, all the way down to the corner. Now when you're sewing, the, after you've made the turn for the last corner, when you're sewing the last edge, only sew down a couple of inches, like maybe two inches. I'm gonna show you that. That's enough. And I'm gonna take that out. From under the sewing machine. Now you've got two long ends and you've got a space right in here and this is the space we're going to use to connect the two ends. Now I've got a whole bunch of extra stuff and you usually will have some amount of extra and what you need to do is just cut yourself a little scrap of this and if you open it out with that fold right there in the middle. And you lay this piece right about in the middle of this. It doesn't have to be exact. Just lay it in the middle with this fold perpendicular to this edge. 
you don't want it parallel. So this is how we're going to estimate how to where to cut your binding so they fit nicely. So what you do is you lay one end of the binding over that little scrap and you cut on the far side of it, just like so. Cut that off so it's on the far side of that piece of scrap. And then you take the other piece of binding, bring it across, and you cut it on this side of the, strap, of the scrap, like so. And you want it pretty accurate because you don't want your end of binding to be too loose or too tight. So once you've got those cut, you can take this out and you can throw it away. Or if you're using a lot of binding the same width, save it and use it for the next project. But now these two will overlap each other by two and a quarter inches, which is what the binding is. So you're, it's a nice, accurate way to do this. So now if you take both of these ends and open them up with the right sides together, and the right sides are always the ones with the fold. So it's these two come together, so the fold, the peaks of the fold. And if you fold your piece in half, it makes them come together a little easier. And then what you're going to do is you're going to sew these together like you sew binding seams to uh, binding strips together across the diagonal like this. Now this this might be easier if you pin it first, but what you have to know is you can't give it much of an edge on either one or your binding will be too short. So I'm just going to give it like an eighth of an inch here. And I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to sew diagonally across. And you kind of, this is kind of the trickiest part of, of a project is getting the, the last corner of the binding right. So I'm just going to stitch right here. I'm going to do a couple stitches and adjust the fabric a little bit. Once you get it going, it, it's pretty easy to reach that opposite corner. Just like so. Then get rid of your thread. And then you're going to cut right across here and take off this extra fabric. Leave a nice quarter inch seam. And then you just finger press this seam open. Let's take it and go like this. Get it nice and open. You can unfold your piece now. And then fold this back on the original fold line, just like so. And lay it down, and it will fit exactly where it goes. And then I'm going to sew the rest of this seam, and then we will flip the whole thing over, and I'll show you how to stitch it down to the front side. Now I can go back to the actual wallet and finish all the instructions with it. And now we're going to just simply turn it around and stitch it in place. Now what I like to do for something like this is I like to clip it all the way around so it makes the sewing of the binding on a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip it and I'll be right back. I've got it clipped almost all the way around. You can see here. And then what I'm going to do is show you how I get the corners nice and squared off. If you've got this corner clipped down and then you clip this corner, get ready to clip this corner like so. Take this corner and stick your thumbnail, your fingernail, right in there. And then fold this back to get a nice 45 degree angle. If you don't fold it far enough, it'll come over like that and it'll be on to the other one and you don't want that. And if you go crazy and fold it way too far, it's not going to meet. It's going to, it's going to miss the corner. So what you do is fold that nice and square and fold that over to be a nice 45 degree angle, just like that. And then I always like to put a clip right in the corner to hold it. And then I'll do the same thing over on this corner. Put a clip right before it. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stick my fingernail in there to make a nice squared end. And then I'm going to fold this over to be the 45 degree angle. Now this one is a little trickier because I accidentally timed my seam and my binding to be right at that corner, which I hate doing, but I end up doing it once in a while anyway. And then take one more clip and put it here. And this is all ready to be stitched all the way around. Now you just go all the way around and stitch it slowly and carefully. Remember, you got a lot of layers and just work stitch close to this inside folded edge. 
So I like to just start along a long edge just because it's easiest. Take a clip off. around the whole the whole entire wallet like that and we'll be back as soon as I'm done all right we're getting close to being done it isn't so bad so far is it okay we've got this sewn all the way around I've turned it over and sewn it all now this is where you've got your pocket edge this is where you've got your zipper and if you turn this over you've got pockets and credit card slots now what you have to do is we're going to stitch in line right down here between these two and this is what will happen this will fold up here so these two edges are even. This will fold over to be the front of your clutch. And this seam you're putting in right here will put a bottom on these two pockets. Otherwise, this will go all the way through to the zipper, which we don't want. Okay, we want the zipper to be one pocket and this to be one pocket. So we're just gonna turn it over and sew a straight line right down here between those two. And be sure to back tack at these two seams. I cut all these extra threads off, like so. Now, this is one pocket, and this is another pocket. Now this gets folded up to here, and this gets folded down to here. All that's left to do now is put the closures on that you wanna put on. And I think I'm going to use a big fat snap that I'm going to hand sew on. So I think I'll do that next. Pick something out and I'll be right back. Okay, you need to find the center of the flap and that's where we'll start. Your, your whole wallet is seven and a half inches wide. So half of seven and a half is three and three fourths. So I put a pin here at three and three fourths. And then if you put the pin straight down Nice and straight down, like so. Now when you lift it up, you can see exactly where it is under here. And you'll know that's your center for the inside. So I'm just gonna put a second pin right there. And I know that that's where I have to sew half of my closure. And this is where I sew the other half, right there. So I'm going to use this great big snap. I'm going to put half of it there and half of it there, and I'll show it to you when I'll be right back. I'm using a really thick upholstery thread, and I'm being very careful not to go through to the front. So I'm just going through the quilted layer, but not all the way to the front. I'm just doing several stitches in each part of the snap. like so. And I'll do the same thing on the other half of the snap. But of course, when you're doing the other half of the snap, you have to keep the pocket open and make sure you're not sewing it through the pocket. So I'll be right back. Finish this up and be right back. All right, we've got our clutch style wallet finished. Now, if you followed along with me, you've got one right in your hand too. It's got a big pocket in the back. It's got a full length zipper on the front and it's got two rows of credit card pockets plus four inside pockets. Nice big zipper. So this wallet will hold a lot of good stuff. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button below and subscribe so you can see some of our new videos as we make them. We'll be making a lot of pattern project videos, um, updating old patterns and putting out new ones as well. And if you have any that you'd like to suggest that we do do a, a video of, please let us know in the comments below. And just for the people watching the video, I'm going to show you a little quick thing you can make with some of the scraps from making this clutch. So stay tuned for just a second and I'll show you that. I'll be right back. Okay, here's a little project you can do with that little leftover scrap of, of the quilted fabric that you have from your wallet. Uh, you can take it and just cut it into two pieces and you'll need a zipper. And this will make a cute little coin purse. So what you do is you take one of these pieces for whatever piece is going to be the wrong side. 
and turn it over. And you're just going to sew it on top of the edge of the zipper. And this is the zipper is right side up right here. And then we're going to sew it down right along here. So I've got my zipper foot on and I'm just going to stitch along here. Now you can use a zipper that's anything longer than four inches will work for this because the fabric will be about four inches. That's about your working area for your zipper. Now what you do is just swing this around and fold that back and take the other piece and put it on the other side of the zipper, just like so, and make sure these two edges line up. And then you're going to sew zipper down on this half. These are great little coin purses for to sell at craft fairs. And if you make them a little bit smaller, they make little credit card and business card holders, which people kind of get a kick out of. And get that down. Snip up some of these extra threads in our way. And you, you need to use a nylon zipper if you're going longer than, than the fabric so you don't break your needle trying to sew it later. Now what you have to do is you're going to simply sew down here, across here, and up here on the wrong side. But before you do that, make sure you open the zipper or you won't be able to get it open after you sew it all shut. So I'm just going to, I've got it half open so I can turn it to the right side. The zipper pieces just get folded in half like this. And when you sew over them, just go really slowly so you don't break your needle. Just go carefully over those zippers. I'm just going to round it a little bit on this corner. You can leave it square or round it off, whichever you prefer. Same thing here, I'm just going to round the corner. Come back up to the top. Snip off the excess zipper, like so, and like so. Trim off those corners, like so. And then because you left the zipper open, you can open it a little further and you can turn it to the right side. And if you wanted to get real fancy, you could serge the edges and, and top stitch by the zipper if you wanted to. But even if you just do it nice and quick and simple like this, you got yourself a cute little coin wallet. Like so. It's a cute little five minute project. And that's all there is to it. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will subscribe and come back and see us when we make new videos. And happy sewing and have a great day. Music